here's the unit circle. And I think that we can find our special triangles here, right? So if I had rotated 30 degrees, and again, this is our unit circle, so our rotating arm would be 1. So our cosine would be the adjacent, or the x over 1. Well, the x value, of course, is right there. So the cosine of 30 degrees is square root of 3 over 2. The sine of 30 degrees is the opposite, or the y over 1. Oh, well, there's my y coordinate right there, 1 half. See how this is working? I get it. 45 degrees. Cosine is my x over 1. Root 2 over 2 over 1. Sine, root 2 over 2 over 1, or root 2 over 2. Tan is y over x. 60 degrees. Sine is going to be the y, square root of 3 over 2. Cosine is going to be the 1 half. Once we get into the other quadrants, of course, you see the positives and the negatives. So over in the second quadrant, Cosine is associated with x, so of course all your x's down here are negative, so all of your cosine ratios will be negative. My sines are y's, so all of the sines will be positive since I'm in positive y land. Down here in the third quadrant, if I'm rotating all the way, let's say, to 210 degrees, right? Again, I look at the x value to get my cosine, the y value to get my sine, and y over x to get my tan. So it's all right here in the unit circle. Is that making some sense? Now, what are all of these right here, Mr. Haas? Pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3. I think those are probably radians. Those are radians. So we need to talk about radians. All right, too. let's talk about radians. Okay. So radians, basically, it's like the metric system and the British system, right? We have degrees, which is based on the Babylonian number system, and we have radians, which is a base 10 number system, like ours. So we use radians in calculus because it's a lot easier, right? If we had to use degrees, we'd have to be converting all the time, and when we're doing derivatives, converting is a mess. So let's talk about radians.